Hey guys, Master Guns here. I was watching a video by my buddy uh, Ed Smith, Captain Ed, um, and uh, he was doing a video earlier. It was a live video of uh, how to lay down base color greens, and he went over color theory and uh, things of that nature, and uh, it inspired me to do a video tonight as well, um, showing how to uh, lay down quick base coats and, in just a couple of steps, get to a good starting point on a model uh, to look just like this, uh, using just an airbrush, a little bit of technique, a um, little dry brushing, and a wash. Um, that was all that was done on this Grizzly here uh, from the recent Heavy Gear Kickstarter. And as you can see, it looks pretty good, definitely tabletop ready. Uh, you can go in, you know, pick out a couple of details, paint some, uh, some metallics, some accent colors, and it would be... Uh, uh, ready to go a uh, real quick process and I thought you know I'd, I'd share it with you guys and um, See what you thought so get that out of the way here All right, so uh, all my minis as always I start with a uh, flat black primer uh, this is a Northern Jaguar I believe uh, from heavy gear so it's based primed ready to go and for my airbrush settings, excuse me, uh, I recently started playing around with higher settings. So I'm actually running at uh, about 15, I'm sorry, cancel that. Uh, I'm actually running at about 23 PSI, 22, 23 PSI right now. Um, so I'm going to mix up my base colors. So the colors I'm going to do today um, are my go-to for olive drab which in this case is going to be Reaper Base uh, Olive Drab, so 9158 Olive Drab from Reaper, with a highlight color of Worn Olive uh, 9159. So the nice thing about the Reaper colors is, you guys can see here, that the colors that work concentrically together, as in a base color versus a highlight color, uh, the numbers go in order. Uh, there's a third color in this set that is the um, the deep shadow and I believe that's called camouflage green or military green I don't have it on hand right now um, but it's the one that's the darker version of olive drab but for uh, for this purposes because we're starting with a black base coat I'm just gonna go with the olive drab as the base so we'll get the airbrush mixed up here So, uh, as always, I'll put a drop of Airbrush Flow Improver from Vallejo. Just one drop for every 20 drops of water and um, uh, paint. So, I'll do a 2 to 1 ratio here. Sorry, I'm mixing this off camera, so I apologize. So we're going to put the olive drab in there. And we're going to apply this using the... Uh, I guess you can call it z the zenithal method. So uh, we're going to leave the miniature flat against the uh, the box that I'm spraying into here, and just hit the top about 45 degrees of a miniature, and then we'll do a light, light dusting underneath just to kind of help the color flow through. But the idea is that we want those dark shades from the black primer to still show through. Okay, colors coming through now. I'm gonna adjust my uh, my spray setting there. All right, so then we're just gonna do the uh, the sweeps back and forth. And again, with airbrushing, as you guys have seen in every uh, tutorial you've ever seen, several light coats. It's not gonna obscure the detail this way until you get a good solid change in color there. Um, you can do this with a rattle can if you really want to, but but airbrush gives you a little more control because the paint doesn't go on quite as thick. And something else to consider too is uh, the focal point of your miniature. You see there we already have the really nice shades, uh, the paint settling on the higher surfaces um, much uh, uh, thicker so it's a little more uh, opaque there so it's already given us a nice uh, uh, visual effect so we're gonna go 
a little bit more here and what I was about to say was um, since typically miniatures are viewed across the table coming at you uh, you know you're playing against an opponent um, you want them to look as striking as possible from the front so what you can do is just concentrate that paint a little bit more on the front half of your miniature if you notice on the back half it'll still be a little darker so we're gonna balance that out a little bit and just kinda add a little more green there if you flip the miniature up then you'll see it's still pretty black on the undersides so we're just gonna lightly dust that just to kinda give the impression that it's painted the same color all the way around there we go and again concentrating more on the front is gonna give you that natural gradient towards the back which is gonna be a nice uh, um, focal length when uh, when we dry brush it to bring out those details all right, so that is, uh, that's the base color laid down right there. That's as simple as it is. I'm gonna hit a little bit more right there. Okay. All right, so as you guys can see, you could do, you know, an entire army of miniatures if they're all primed and ready to go in just a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna set him to the side while I uh, clear out my, uh, my hopper, and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, I've mixed up my worn olive, which is going to be my uh, my highlight color. Okay, so that's coming through good. Now here we want more control, so I'm going to close the uh, the needle gauge all the way just until I can uh, get some good flow control there. Okay. So when I'm looking for a lot of extra control, what I'll do is I'll actually pull the uh, the cap off the end of the uh, the airbrush. Uh, this particular model still functions in this capacity. Um, some models, you know, if you pull the cap off the airbrush, you lose all the vacuum pressure. So, uh, but luckily this one, see that uh, nice bright olive there. All right. So what I'm going to do here, here's the trick, is it's all about the angle you're going to hit the mini at. So you want to think about where your light source is coming from. In this case, I know it's coming more from the front. So we're just going to concentrate that right on the front there. Open up that gap a little bit. There we go. Hit the top of that missile launcher a little bit. And when possible, you want to try to angle it away so any overspray is not going to um, hit a part of the model you don't want it to hit. You can control this by, um, you know, masking, using a masking fluid or um, what have you. But, uh, you know, with a, with a little bit of pre-planning, you can pretty well, you know, control where you want it to go. Uh, now, if you want to get a really cool effect that's going to make the dry brushing pop, something else you can do is actually kind of go against common logic and concentrate your highlight colors more on the bottom sections of things. Um, this is going to give it kind of a almost a non-metallic metallic look. So if you look like on the, the legs here, we're going to go towards the, uh, the base of the lower leg. Oh. Got a bit tip dry there. Give me one second. All right, so we're going to go towards the base of the lower leg. I'm going to build that color up there. Open that gap a little. There we go. See, so now that's drawing the eye towards the base of the leg. And what you do on one side, you want to do on the other. Now, granted, this is in the inside of a leg, so we don't want to do it quite as uh, pronounced. And of course, hit any areas where the light is obviously going to be uh, uh, more prominent. We're going to hit the arms. And just like with a traditional paintbrush, uh, it's really all about brush control. In this case, airbrush control.
Okay. And another thing to consider too is you don't want to do it too much. You want you want the areas that you're you're hitting to pop. You don't necessarily want it to be evenly distributed all over the miniature because then it's going to look uh, um, too uniform, I guess, and maybe not as interesting. Now there are some areas where obviously the light's going to hit it more naturally. Um, then you're going to want to concentrate on those areas uh, just to give it that, I don't know, sense of, of realism. Okay, and a little bit of overspray is going to be all right. Uh, the wash is going to uh, to serve to kind of tie all that together. Okay. Now again, with this particular model, we want the focus to be on the head and chest area, again, just to make it interesting looking. So we're going to add some, uh, some little bit heavier layers there. And again, pre-planning on your miniature is paramount because uh, I know I'm going to paint the upper legs and upper arms. A, um, a different color to add contrast and so I'm not so worried about getting overspray on them. And that's a, that's a pretty good base. Now, something to consider as well is the, um, here, let me uh, get that a little bit in there. There we go. All right. So if you guys, see if I can zoom in on this, or not zoom in, but at least get it to focus up close. So if you guys look at that shoulder there, so the lighter point is towards the bottom. So when we apply the dry brush, it's going to catch the uppermost edges with the lighter color. And so what's that can that's going to do is give us the um, the impression of like a painted metal. So you know what? I'm going to hit the side of the head just a little bit. There we go. Just to kind of balance it out. You can take it a step further and actually go one more shade lighter uh, on the um, the real focal points, top of the head, side of the chest there. That's that's more towards the uh, uh, towards you while you're painting. Um, but after the wash, it's going to kind of tone it all down and tie it all together. So it's really kind of an unnecessary step. Uh, you can do it if you're doing like a display piece, but since this is just for the tabletop, I'm not worried about it too much. Uh, you know, I'm gonna get the back of the arm there a little bit. Okay. All right, I think that's pretty good. All right, so um, well, I'm going to pause it while I clean up my airbrush, and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. All right, uh, so now we're going to apply the wash, um, just like any wash you've ever applied. In this case, we're going to be using uh, Citadel's uh, Athonian Camo Shade, uh, which is a really great uh, kind of a greenish brown wash. So I'll get my uh, wash brush here, and then you just, like any wash, you just, you know, I don't want to say slop it on, but, you know, just apply it very liberally. 
doesn't need to be thinned. Uh, it's great right out of the pot. I mean, say what you will about GW, but uh, their washes really just cannot be beat. Um, the Nolan oil is great for black. Um, I mean, I've had really good luck with Army Painters washes in the past too. In fact, I just picked up their version of the camo shade as well. I've yet to try it out, but um, I will, you know, shortly once I get this army done. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it or not, their uh, their washes are really just hands down probably the best on the on the market. I've I've not used anything else that has uh, um, been comparable. And again, I like it because you can just really just spread it on there, and it goes on very very smooth. Um, these double sized pots that they come in now are just fantastic, especially when you're doing a lot of models. Um, like for this, uh, this heavy gear force I'm building, um, I mean, one army is 12 miniatures, so. Oh, looks like I got a, uh, got a hair or something stuck in there, so let's get that out before that wash dries. Um, but the cool thing is, is, uh, all their washes work just as well. Um, you know, the, the blues, I see, I've got the blue and the purple back here with the Null Oil and the Agrax Earth Shade for my basic, uh, um, browns and blacks. So, uh, really just, they just can't be beat. So the most important thing when you're applying a wash is realize this stuff dries very quickly. Time is not on your side. So, um... Just kind of slop it on and let the wash do what it's intended to do, and that's get into all the the recesses. If you start seeing pooling and stuff on some surfaces, um, you know, again, the wash it's water based, so it's going to uh, eventually just kind of dry out. You know, it might go on a little thicker in places, but again, for tabletop quality, this isn't going to be bad. Okay. All right, I think that's a. Uh, pretty well even there so you can see just just with the application of the wash that already looks just you know 100 times better so i'm going to pause this go hit this with a hair dryer to uh, to get it to dry and then i'll come back and we'll do the final stage and we'll compare it with the grizzly i showed you earlier Whoop, a little camera shake there all right guys we're back um all right and we're on to the final step so i got my wet palette open it's ready to go uh, so the final color we're going to be using for the dry brush to get the uh, the final effect like you see on this Grizzly is Moldy Skin from Reaper. Uh, it's kind of a greenish khaki. You can't really see the green in it here, but uh, um, it works really well over camo colors. So a bit of a thing on dry brushing. Um, I know there's... Now, several different schools of thought on dry brushing. Uh, I still think that uh, if the model is very angular, then um, it's, you know, an entirely useful technique, especially when you're trying to do a bunch of models uh, up, you know, to, to tabletop standard real quick. You know, it just really makes them pop, makes them look good. Um, but, you know, some people look down on it and they prefer just to do complete edge highlighting. I say, hey, that's fine. Whatever, uh, whatever works for you. All right, so I got a little moldy skin on my old uh, flat brush. Uh, it's just a cheapy, you know, Royal Fine Sable. I think I picked it up at Michaels or Hobby Lobby or something. All right, and then uh, a little too much paint on there still. And again, remember with dry brushing, you want almost no paint left on that brush. It's going to look a little rough and chalky at first. It's 
Something else to think about too is um, if you are going to seal your model with um, tester's dull coat or something like that uh, when you're done, that that dull coat is going to tone all the shades you've put on there down uh, towards the end. So just something to, to consider if you think, oh man, that, that highlight's a little too strong. Maybe I don't like it quite that much. Um, once you hit it with a dull coat, it's going to kind of tie it all together. And again, with a dry brushing, you want to kind of just try and concentrate on the uppermost surfaces. We're going to do kind of a worn and chipped scheme on this guy before all is said and done. So um, if it's a little messy looking, that's fine with me. You also want to make sure that you are concentrating on the darker points of the model as well. Uh, and again, that's to get that kind of a shiny metal look. If you uh, maybe you're using different paints or something and the paint you use end up coming out a little too stark, you can always hit it with another wash. It's going to tone the, the base color down a little bit as well uh, and make it um, darker but that might be a that might be a good effect you you know in the long run you might end up getting a good result with it you know the whole thing about model painting is uh just try new things you can always you know shoot the model with primer again and try over you know not a big deal especially when you work with an airbrush i mean if i had to hit this thing with uh um you know black again just rattle can black um you know what what would i be out 10 minutes so you know try new things see what works see what doesn't and let's get the final final hit here so as you see the more i brush it kind of evens out those highlights so now i'm kind of just hitting it all over just to kind of just to get those colors to pop You're working on metal models. Something to, worth noting is uh, be careful about the ferrule, the metal part of the brush hitting that model too hard because uh, it will chip paint. Uh, plastic models, you know, they give a little bit more, so it's not quite a concern or as much of a concern. But all right, I think that's pretty good. All right, so let's look at the uh, the grizzly and this one next to each other. There you go. So, um, again, that's what maybe 15 total minutes worth of work to get it to that point. Uh, in hindsight, I think the Grizzly, I did give a second wash to because it's noticeably darker. Um, but that's fine. You know, knowing that, I can go back and give this guy a second wash. It'll tone everything down, kind of tie it together. And let's see if I can get that to focus. Yeah, but again, um, that's about as simple as it is. So... Uh, real quick way to get you know an army painted up real fast especially if you're working with really angular miniatures uh, like these heavy gear minis are all right guys uh, it's been master guns thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time